Hello, uh, welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about the kingdom plantae. Okay, these are plants. We will do two things, or three things actually. Number one is we're going to learn about the characteristics and uses of bryophytes. Number two, we will look at the life cycle of moss and liverwort. And number three, I'm going to share with you your project about bryophytes. So let's begin. Uh, we already know that all life is grouped into three domains. We have bacteria, archaea, eukarya. And these three domains are also divided into six kingdoms. We have looked at different kingdoms, and today we're going to look at the plant kingdom, kingdom plantae. Uh, what are the characteristics of plants? I'm sure you know some of these already. Uh, they are photosynthetic. They can make their own food. Uh, they get energy from the sun or light and change it to food. They also have cell wall, which is made of cellulose, and they have chlorophyll and other pigments. Okay. But how do we group plants? What criteria do we use? So there are different criteria which we can use to group plants. Uh, let me show you one way we can classify or group plants. We can group plants into two using their habitat. Some plants live in water, we call them aquatic plants. Example are algae, which we can have green, red, and brown algae. Algae. Uh, and some plants live on land, we call them land plants. Now those which live on land are also divided into two. Some of them do not have xylem and phloem, which we call as bryophytes. Example is the moss, liverwort, and hornworth. They do not have xylem and phloem. And some of them have xylem and phloem. Okay, remember xylem and phloem are transport tissues, which will help to transport water and food through what? the plants and bryophytes do not have the xylem and phloem. Now, those which have xylem and phloem are also divided into two. Some of them reproduce by seed. We call them spermatophytes. And some of them reproduce by spore. We call them pteridophytes or ferns. So you can see in this picture, uh, under the, the leaf of the fern are dark spots. These are the spores. Those which reproduce, reproduce by seed are also divided into two. In some of them, the seed is inside a fruit. It is covered by a fruit. Example is this apple fruit over here. You can see that the seed is inside the fruit. We call them angiosperms, and sometimes we call them flowering plants, flowering plants, because they produce flowers, which will grow and develop to become the fruit and seed. And some of these uh, spermatophytes have naked seed, which means the seed is not covered in fruits. It is just naked and just hanging in the air. We call them the gymnosperms. gymnosperms. So this is what? A criteria we can use to group plants. Today we're going to look at one group of plants, the bryophytes. Okay, and talk about that. So, like we said before, bryophytes do not have transport tissues. No xylem, no phloem, okay? 
uh, in bigger plants like mango or apple trees they have the xylem and phloem to transport water and food this is why they can grow very very big okay like mango or apple plant but bryophytes do not have this xylem and phloem because of this they cannot grow bigger so they are very very small and they need to stay near the water okay so they grow near water areas so that they can get water easily there is no xylem and phloem now they also need water to reproduce uh, they the the sperm from the bryophytes need water to swim to join with the egg so there is always a need for water to reproduce they are again they are very small about one centimeter to three centimeters tall and the biggest or tallest uh, moss is this dorsonian sub super superba okay uh, is the tallest moss about 60 centimeters tall and scientists believe that bryophytes are probably the first land plants remember life started in water and over many many years millions of years moved to land scientists believe that bryophytes were the first land plants which uh, evolved so there are three types of these bryophytes we have number one mosses number two liverworts number three hornworts let's look at mosses uh, sorry, before that, before that, let's look at the importance of bryophytes. Uh, they are very important in four different ways. Number one is the environment. Uh, mosses and bryophytes can prevent soil erosion. Okay, this is soil erosion in time. Number two, they are pollution indicators. This is pollution in time. Now, some, some mosses and bryophytes uh, can die. They die when there is pollution in the air or soil. So this can show scientists that there is a pollution if the mosses start to die. Okay, so very important pollution indicators. Number two is horticulture. Uh, this means they are used in gardening all around the world. Number three, industry. Uh, some of these mosses are used uh, as peat. Uh, and we burn this peat for energy, just like we burn the wood. But the peat is even better than wood. And the mosses which are usually used for peat are called sphagnum or the peat moss. Number two is that they can also absorb toxic chemicals in water. Okay, so they can clean the water from toxic chemicals like oil and other detergents. Number four, they are used in medicine, in traditional medicines to treat cuts and burns. Let's talk about mosses, okay? So, like we already said, all bryophytes, including mosses, need water for reproduction. The sperm has to swim in the water to join with the egg. Mosses also have leaf-like structure. You can see in this picture, there's something like a leaf. It is leaf-like, not a leaf. Uh, but it's leaf-like. It looks like a leaf. And they also have root-like structures. Okay, Again, not roots, but just look like a root. An example is this funaria. Okay? We're going to look at that as our example. So here is a moss, a funaria. You can see that it has two branches one of them is the female and one is the male how do i know that one is a male because on top of it of the 
plant is the male structure, male reproductive structure. We call that antheridium. Now, this antheridium will make uh, sperms. On the other side, on the other branch, is the female reproductive organ. We call that archegonium, which also has the eggs. When the plant is covered by water, the sperms can swim from the antheridium to the archegonium and fertilize the eggs. This means the egg and the sperm will join together to create a zygote and an embryo. The embryo is going to grow out of the archegonium and form this structure, just like that. And at the end of the structure is a capsule which contains spores. Okay, the spores can go out or be released, and when they fall down onto the ground, they can grow back again to form uh, this structure. Now, we call the green part, the leafy part, okay, all of this area, we call that the gametophyte. And that structure here, like that, this is called the sporophyte. So there, are, there is gametophyte and sporophyte. And the sporophyte depends on the gametophyte for food. Okay, so this structure, the sporophyte, needs food and water from the gametophyte. If there is no gametophyte, the sporophyte will die. Uh, let's look at the life cycle of Fenaria. Okay, so we already looked at this part where the sperm is going to swim from the antheridium to the archegonium and join together with the egg. By the way, the sperms are, they have two flagella, okay? they are biflagellated. They can swim in the water and join with the eggs, the egg, uh, and form the zygote. The zygote will grow to become an embryo, which will grow to form the sporophyte, which has the capsule, and inside the capsule we have the spores. When, this, when the capsule is matured, it will release the, the spores, and when they fall onto the ground, it will germinate or grow to form this structure. And then it will form another structure which looks like this. This is the young gametophyte. And we have a name for that. We call that protonema. It is just what? What is protonema? A young gametophyte with the root line structure we call rhizoids, which will grow to form what? The gametophyte. And the process will start again. Now, let's look at liverwort. Just like mosses, liverwort also need water for reproduction. Again, the sperm has to swim to the egg, so they always need water. But they have taloid cells, and their cells are not advanced like in mosses. This is advanced in Thai, so they are not advanced. Okay? They're just simple, very, very simple. And the example we, we will look at today is called Macantia. It's a picture of Macantia. Uh, if you look closely at the Macantia, you can see that there are some structures going up. One of them here looks like the fingers. Okay, I've circled in red. And the other one I've circled in, bl in blue look like the umbrella. The one which look like the fingers are the female gametophytes, the female. And under this female gametophyte, we have the archegonium, which is the female reproductive organ. And inside the archegonium are the eggs. Let's look at the male gametophyte, which looks like the umbrella. So 
Also inside it, we have the anteridium, which is the male reproductive organ, which has the sperms. Now, when there is water, the sperm can swim in, what, in the water and join together with the eggs. Uh, let's look at the example here. So the eggs, you can see in this picture, the eggs, the sperms are swimming and joining with the egg to form a zygote, which will become the embryo. The embryo will grow and form this yellow structure called the sporophyte. The sporophyte will produce the, the spores, which can be released and grow back again into a liverwort. You can see here the sporophyte in liverwort, the macantia, is very different, very small, compared to the, the moss, which look very tall like that. Okay? And just like in mosses, the sporophyte depends on the gametophyte for food and water. Now, liverwort can also reproduce asexually which means they do not need the sperm and the eggs to meet. On top of the atalus, this structure, there are structures we call gemma caps. They look like the cap. And inside these gemma caps are gemmae. Okay, one is gemma, many gemmae. And the gemmae are just haploid tissues of cells, okay? haploid collection of cells or tissues. Sometimes they can break off and fall onto the ground and grow back into a new liverwort. Okay, this is what asexual reproduction. Okay, so in summary, what have we learned so far? We've talked about the characteristics of bryophytes. We said they, they don't have xylem and phloem, they are small and they have many uses. There are three main examples. We have mosses, liverwort, and hornwort, and they can reproduce sexually, like we saw here. In mosses, they, the sperm will swim to the eggs and then form a zygote, which will grow to become a sporophyte, and the sporophyte will produce spores. But in Liverwort, they can also have asexual reproduction through the gemmae. Okay, so this is the end of bryophyte, but I have a work for you to do, your project, okay? It's a very simple project. Let me explain. You are going to make a moss terrarium. Okay, this is a picture of a terrarium, okay, with mosses. Okay, if you want to use liverwort or, other, or hornwort, you can use because they're all bryophyte. But I think it's easy to use moss. They're easy to find. Uh, you make it like this in a glass with stones and something. Make it beautiful, okay? The design and the size is up to you, but don't make it like this. <laughs> I don't have the space to keep it if you make it too big. Two students per group, and you give it to me before or on 8 August, so you have time to work together, okay? If you have any question about the project, you can message me uh, online, and I will help you with that. Thank you very much for listening, and see you next time.